In this lecture, we look at simple circuits that consist of a single closed loop of resistors and voltage sources. We explain the important concept of voltage division and show how circuits can be simplified by combining voltage sources and resistors within a single closed path. Let's begin by looking at a simple circuit that has a voltage source applied across a series combination of two resistors and let's see if we can determine the voltage across each resistor. Well to analyze this circuit the first thing I'll do is define the current that flows through this simple closed loop as I of t. Now if we knew I of t we could use Ohm's law to write down an expression for the voltage on each resistor. So the voltage across the first resistor would be R1 times the current. The voltage across the second resistor is R2 times the current. Now let's see if we can figure out what the current would be. Well if we begin, let's use this point in the circuit and use Kirchhoff's voltage law as we move around this circuit in this simple loop. So if we do that we'll go up by a voltage of V of T. We'll come around, we'll drop since we enter on the positive side by the voltage V1 and we'll drop by V2 and that'll bring us back to the point that we started so that would all be equal to zero. Now we can use our expressions for V1 and V2 in terms of the current. So this would be R1 times I of T minus R2 times I of T and that's still equal to zero. So this tells us that V of T minus, well, let's write this as I of T times the combination, the sum, R1 plus R2. That's all equal to zero. So that allows us to write an expression for this current. I of T would be V of T over the sum of the two resistances. So this current in terms of the voltage V of T and the two resistances is the voltage divided by the sum of the two resistances. Now if we use that expression for the current we can write an expression for the voltage V1 well I of T is V of T over R1 plus R2 and then we need to multiply that by R1. So let me write it this way. V of T, then we'll have R1 over R1 plus R2. So again, R1 is here. The expression for I of T is V of T over R1 plus R2. There's V of T, there's R1 plus R2. And we can write the similar relationship to define V2. that'll be V of T times R2 over R1 plus R2. Again, V2 of T is R2 times I of T. Here's the R2 and V of T over R1 plus R2. That's the current. So these two relationships are very important and this is, uh, they make up the the concept that we call voltage division or sometimes we'll refer to this as the voltage divider relationship. And that's important enough that let me just summarize it again with a simple diagram. So let's take any situation where we have two resistors that are connected in series as we've shown here and the resistance value for this resistor I'll call R1 
and for this resistor I'll call R2 and if there's a total voltage that we call V across the combination of those two and we're interested in either the voltage across R1 or the voltage across R2 we can get these through this relationship the voltage, let's use the first one, voltage across the first resistor is the combination, the total voltage across both times a ratio and that ratio is the resistance of that resistor over the total resistance and if we use that same principle to find the voltage on the second resistor that would be the total voltage times the ratio of the resistance of the second resistor over the total resistance. And that relationship is known as the voltage division relationship or sometimes we'll call it the voltage divider relationship. Well, Let's take a look at an example with a few numbers in it here for the voltages and resistances. So let's suppose we have a segment of a circuit and I've got some points in the circuit labeled A, B, and C. Between A and B is a 20 kilo ohm or a 20,000 ohm resistor. Between B and C is a 30 kilo ohm or a 30,000 ohm resistor. And we're told that the voltage at point C relative to point A is 10 volts. So the increase from this point to this point is 10 volts and from that point point A to point C goes across both of those resistors. So what we want to do is see well how much of that increase in voltage occurs as we move across this resistor and how much of it would we move over this resistor. So if we use the voltage division relationship, let's look at this situation, then the voltage at point B relative to A that's the voltage across the 20 kilo ohm resistor well that's the total voltage across the 2 which is 10 times the ratio of the resistance on that resistor which is 20,000 ohms divided by the total resistance between these two points which is 20 plus 30 or 50 thousand ohms. And this is a ratio of ohms so that is unitless and this quantity had units of volts so overall we'll have units of volts. And that'll be 4 volts. Now if we want to know the voltage across the 30 kilo ohm resistor which we've labeled as the voltage at point C relative to point B It's going to be the total voltage times the ratio of the volt the resistance of that resistor to the total resistance. And again, that'll have units of volts, and that turns out to be 6 volts, which shouldn't surprise us too much because if we're going to have 10 volts from this point to this point, and we knew there were 4 volts increase from this point to this point, then we have to have a 6 volt increase there. Well now let's look at another circuit that consists of a single closed loop with three resistors and three voltage sources. Now suppose our interest in this circuit is confi confined to the voltages that exist between nodes C and E. So for instance we might want to find that voltage V sub C E or we might want to find V sub D E. And what we'd like to do is simplify this circuit in a way that would make that analysis simpler. So here's the segment on the right of this circuit that contains the points C and E and what we'd like to be able to do is take all of the elements to the left of those points and recombine them into a couple of circuit elements that might look like this, that is a voltage source and a resistor. Well it turns out that the voltage source 
is determined by the voltage increases and decreases that are caused by the voltage sources in the original circuit along this path. And the resistance is the sum of the resistances between these points along this path. So the voltage source here, V of T, well that'll be an increase of V3 and a decrease of V1. And the resistance, well that's R3 plus R1. Now the value of this simplification is that we can use this simplified circuit to determine the voltages between points C and D or between points D and E or between C and E. But when using a simplification like this we can no longer determine other voltages in the circuit such as the voltage between points B and C or between A and F. Alright, well, let's take a look at a specific example. Suppose we have this circuit that has three resistors, two voltage sources, and what we'd like to do is determine the voltage at A relative to B. So we'll call that VAB. So let's use the principle we just talked about. Let's put this location A So here's A, here's B, and we have a 20 kilo ohm resistor. We'd like to find this voltage. VAB. So what we'll do is we'll replace everything else in the circuit with one resistor and one voltage source. Now this voltage source, let's move from B to A through the rest of the circuit, will go up by 10 volts and up by 5 volts. So this will have 15 volts In the resistor, we have a 40 kilo ohm resistor and a 10 kilo ohm resistor, so we'll have 50 kilo ohms. So now, if we want to find VAB, we'll use the voltage division relationship, and that'll be 15 volts times 20 kilo ohms. over the sum of the two, and that's 70 kilo ohms. So this is ohms over ohms, and the only unit left would be volts. So that voltage would be 30 sevenths of a volt. So that's a way that we can use the principle of combining voltage sources, combining resistors, and then applying the voltage division relationship to solve for the voltage between A and B in this circuit.